there, scientists. Today, we are talking about the hydrosphere. Your goal today is that you can describe the hydrosphere and you can explain how the hydrosphere interacts with the other systems on Earth's surface for different materials and processes. As we've been working, you know we're talking about all four of Earth's systems or Earth's spheres. Uh, the geosphere, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. And today, our focus is on the hydrosphere. So when we're talking about the hydrosphere, the first thing we need to start thinking about is what do we know about puddles, snow, or ice that you've ever seen in your environment? And think about what happens to water at, or snow or ice as it disappears. Now, one of the questions we have to ask is, where does that water, snow, or ice, where does it go when it disappears, when it evaporates, or when it gets absorbed into the soil? Where does it go? So, how do you think clouds, salt water, and icebergs are related? So, if we look at our image right here, we have clouds. Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets or ice crystals. We have salt water. Salt water, the salt water in the ocean is part of the hydrosphere. Most of the water on Earth is found in the ocean. The ocean supports a variety of ecosystems. And icebergs. Icebergs are made up of the solid state of water, ice. Similar to the way ice floats in your lemonade, icebergs float in ocean water. So what could clouds, salt water, and icebergs, what could they all have in common? <laughs> they are all part of the hydrosphere. That is a great suggestion. Some of you are saying that they all contain water, and that is true as well. So as we jump into the reading, we are going to focus on how the hydrosphere interacts with the other spheres, with the other systems and what, how do we describe the hydrosphere? The hydrosphere is made up of all of the liquid water on Earth, as well as all the fro water frozen in ice and snow. It includes the freshwater in streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, and wetlands. It includes the salt water in the ocean. The clouds in the sky, which are made up of water droplets or particles of ice, are also part of the hydrosphere. So we're talking about all the fresh water in streams and rivers, ponds, and lakes. We're talking about the salt water in the ocean, and we're talking about the water droplets in the sky. They're all part of the hydrosphere. Groundwater, the water in the soil between the rocks below Earth's surface, is part of the hydrosphere too. The water in the hydrosphere is constantly moving. Rain that falls on land enters rivers which flow toward the ocean. Water enters the atmosphere when it evaporates or changes from a liquid to a gas. Eventually, water in the atmosphere condenses onto dust and other tiny particles in the air, forming clouds. Liquid or solid water falls to the ground as rain or snow. I know that some of you right now are thinking, that sure sounds like the water cycle, because it is. All organisms require water to survive. A great variety of organisms live in the ocean, while others live in fresh water. On land, plants take in water from the soil. All animals need water to survive. Most land animals cannot survive without taking in water. So I'm sure in this paragraph right here, you're thinking, hey, that sure sounds like there's a couple spheres that are interacting in this paragraph here. So let's recap. What is Earth's hydrosphere made of? The hydrosphere is made up of all of the liquid water on Earth, as well as all of the frozen water and ice and snow, and the water that is in the atmosphere. And what are some of those forms that water takes in the hydrosphere? 
a water could be fresh water in rivers or lakes or streams. It could be salt water. It could be icebergs. It could be groundwater. It could be water as a gas, as a vapor in the atmosphere. It could be droplets. It could be ice crystals in the clouds. It could be snow. It could be rain. It could be sleet. It could be types of precipitation. There are many forms that water can take place in the hydrosphere. Water is in the hydrosphere is constantly moving. So how is water in the hydrosphere constantly moving? Well, you get that rain or snow that falls from the clouds. Some water falls on the ground and sinks in. Some enters rivers which flow toward the oceans. Water evaporates from the ground, rivers and ocean and enters the atmosphere. The, gas, the gaseous water in the atmosphere eventually condenses or changes to a liquid water or ice and forms clouds and the movement begins again. And we've talked about this before. This is all part of that water cycle where water is constantly being recycled through Earth's systems and processes. Rain, snow, sleet, and hail are different forms of precipitation. The amount of water that moves through the hydrosphere does not change and is constantly moving. So, do you think that you could name at least two ways the hydrosphere interacts with the biosphere? Well, again, if we go back to our text, we could think of two ways. Um, we could say here that a great variety of organisms live in the ocean while others live in fresh water. We could say on land, plants take in the water from the soil. We could say all animals need water to survive. Most land animals could not survive without taking in water. So we can identify that plants are gonna take in water and animals need water to survive. We also know that the ocean supports a variety of different ecosystems. What are some ways the hydrosphere interacts with the geosphere? Well, that is going to be that groundwater topic where the water in the soil and between the rocks below the Earth's surface. So it's the water is underground. So groundwater fills spaces in soil and lies between some of the rocks below the Earth's surface. Moving water weathers and erodes rocks. So we also know that rain and and ice can erode rock and it can affect that geosphere as well. And that's another way that these two spheres are overlapping and interacting with each other. The constant movement of water through the Earth's hydrosphere, biosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere is called the water cycle. You're going to need to continue to be aware of the water cycle and do some more research on the water cycle so you can understand how this concept elaborates on these interactions between the hydrosphere and the other spheres. Remember about 70% of the earth is covered by the earth's oceans, but that water is not readily usable by a lot of the living things on earth. So with so much water that is salt water, what happens with that remaining 30%? So that's another thing that we will explore and think about as we move forward. If we have this hydrosphere, how much of that fresh water in the hydrosphere is usable and readily available? Because a large percentage of that fresh water is going to be frozen in icebergs and glaciers. And we're going to have to think about how much is available for humans or plants or animals to use to survive. Moving forward, when you start to evaluate today, when you look at what you're trying to do, is you need to be able to define what groundwater is. You have to be able to identify what processes move water from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere. And again, we've talked about that a lot in just this last few moments. And finally, you have to explain how does water in the atmosphere return to Earth's surface? I'll give you a hint on those last two. That is all about the water cycle. 
So again, when we are done here today, you are able to describe the hydrosphere and you're able to explain how the hydrosphere interacts with other systems to affect the Earth's surface materials and processes, all of the things that happen and how all of the spheres interact together. You're going to be awesome at this. Pay close attention. Be a critical thinker. Ask hard questions. Understand how the hydrosphere interacts and how the water cycle plays a huge part in that. And remember, always be a critical thinker. See you, scientists. Bye. Thank you.